What's up everyone, it's Dakota, and welcome back to another video. It's finally good to have something, hopefully, here soon, uh, uploaded to the channel. But today we got some spoilers for the new Ixalan set, uh, The Lost Caverns of Ixalan. So uh, there's some cool things we're going to go over, some of the new cards. Uh, we're going to look at returning mechanics, some new mechanics that kind of explain and see what they do uh, on some cool cards and then also some reminders and that for the set once we actually get our hands on it we start getting more spoilers things like that and in general some other cool cards that uh, have been spoiled so far so if you don't like spoilers this is kind of your warning right now like don't continue watching if you want to try to remain spoiler free uh, those of you who really don't care uh we're gonna look at some cool cards we're gonna look at some new mechanics some returning mechanics uh i guess if you consider that like a spoiler um of course before we get too deep into that i would appreciate it if you subscribe to the channel ring notification bell all that stuff support the channel we are growing at a rapid pace compared to uh months previous so i would really appreciate it if we can kind of keep it rolling um you know i'm gonna do a lot better of a job you know after all the craziness posting videos and stuff so if you want to see modern videos you want to see pioneer videos you want to see spoilers all that great great stuff uh please subscribe show some support on the channel i really do appreciate it without further ado the moment you've all been waiting for let's go ahead and take a look at some new cards from the lost caverns of ixalan one so we're going to start off with the first new mechanic and probably already going to be one of the most controversial ones just in the comparisons i think it's going to draw once we kind of get to play with these sort of cards so geological appraiser is nothing special a four mana three two when it enters the battlefield if you cast it discover three it doesn't have any other you know abilities keywords so on and so forth uh discover three is the big thing and oh my god is discover three or, or just, just discover mechanic period just not awful but it, it might be awful so uh exile cards from the top of your library until you exile a non-land card with mana value three or less cast it without paying its mana cost or put it to your hand put the rest on the bottom in a random order does that sound like anything to you uh it is essentially a ripoff of the cascade mechanic except like cascade was just a keyword that was put on a card and then you looked uh, equal to you know or less than or lower or yeah less than like the mana cost of the card so discover is essentially like it's discover n so n could be anything it could be discover 10 as uh you'll see on uh one of the other spoiler cards that i did not pick out because i thought discover 3 and having the reminder text was a lot better than discover 10 but you know you can imagine like so what something like that would look like uh you can essentially cascade into uh certain spells so uh at this point like discover 3 is a little bit easier or a little bit harder to manipulate because you know we see it in like some of these other decks where you you know flip into say a shardless agent shardless agent you could then cast it without paying its mana cost and then gets cascade and you get like rhinos or you get living end so on and so forth so uh we could see potentially uh discover if there's like a pretty good creature i i could even see like a four mana three two just like as like a one of essentially being like a cascader that then could either hit the namesake card of the deck or hit like another cascade creature like shardless agent or even uh violent outburst and kind of like snowball from there but uh overall like discover looks like it could be a pretty fun mechanic to play around with like in standard even in pioneer it would be pretty interesting modern and forward or modern and backward i guess i should say is going to be pretty interesting to look at and keep an eye on because if there's like any one of these cards that you know has like discover two and it's like uh, even like a two mana probably even like a two mana card or a three mana card whatever you know that could definitely see play considering that the only thing that this deck would be able to hit then with that theoretically would either be another copy of itself or something like a rhinos and stuff and it's just a deck that doesn't need any more consistency necessarily maybe it doesn't even want it but uh overall you know that would be something that i would look at to monitor going forward uh with the discover mechanic but you know overall i think i'd like it for a standard format something easy to uh easy to uh, think about easy to play with you know and and overall just a pretty fun mechanic overall so uh with that said let's go ahead and take a look at our next new card and our next new mechanic from the lost explorers of ixalan 
So here we have the next new card with the next new mechanic from the set. Uh, we have Uk, Uk Benbach, The Great Mistake. And I think The Great Mistake is giving it this unfortunate name because I have no idea how to, how to even pronounce it. Uh, I'm going to hope that that is at least close so I don't offend it too much. So uh, it's a 5 mana 6 4. Vigilance Menace with Descend 8, with it being. Descend 8 being the new mechanic. So if you remember from the original Ixalan set, uh, or I guess rather the uh, the next set in the Ixalan set that is, of course, uh, eluding me in name, uh, there was a mechanic called Ascend, which basically said if you had 10 or more permanents in play and you had essentially had an Ascend card on the battlefield, you gain the City's Blessing. And the City's Blessing was essentially just like a like an emblem of sorts that gave you some extra benefits if you you know had cards that cared about it like i think wayward sword tooth was like one that let you play extra lands and if you had the city's blessing you could attack with it aside from that like it couldn't attack uh i don't even think block either well i think it could block but you know either way uh and then there were some other cards that like would let you uh give it activated abilities so on so descend is essentially the opposite of that mechanic so uh as vigilance menace descend eight is you know six mana you know four a blue and a black you return uh this card from your graveyard to the battlefield with a finality counter on it activate only if there are eight or more permanent cards in your graveyard and only as a sorcery so this is a card that essentially gets a benefit from having permanent cards in the graveyard rather than having permanent cards in play so you know you have uh, lands creatures enchantments things like that uh, artifacts to kind of help you get to the point where you can uh, descend this card uh, there's another card in the set that says that you create a token x or x number of tokens where x is the amount of times that you descended which essentially means how many permanent cards you've had go to the graveyard that turn which could be like a tracking issue if you're playing on non digital clients uh if you have to keep track of something like that but you know this is a fairly simple at least this card in particular is a very simple way of doing it uh, a, a creature with a, a finale counter on it would die it gets exiled instead so i mean this isn't like necessarily a repeatable like i'm gonna keep returning this into play and you have to deal with it for limited purposes that's going to be kind of nice um aside from that descend is pretty interesting for the fact that it now wants you to prioritize like having permanent cards in your graveyard rather than you know having them in play i believe that that would be a lot easier for a lot of decks especially this day and age B rather than getting like 10 permits in a play i think you could get to a point where you're activating this a lot sooner than uh, you are getting to ascend to the city's blessing so overall really cool uh this card in particular really cool design of course we need to wait and see what all the other you know cards that potentially have descend on them look like but uh overall so far pretty good i like the concept like the idea so uh yeah let's go ahead and take a look at a new the last new kind of tidbit of a thing that is kind of new to the set and i think should have been included in the original set you know dating back to you know i think like the mid to late the mid to late 2010 so uh let's go ahead and jump over and look at our last new card that has a new thing stapled to it uh, you'll see why here in a second so here we have the card spyglass siren nothing super special it's a one mana one one with flying no big deal but when it enters the battlefield you create a map token the map token is an artifact that has pay one tap sacrifice this artifact target creature you control explores activate only as a sorcery so this means that your creatures can explore explore is a returning mechanic from the original Ixalan set that essentially says that you reveal the top card of your deck if it's a land card it goes to your hand if it is a non-land card you can decide to put it in your graveyard or not or leave it on top and and you put a plus one plus one counter on that creature so uh, i think this is something that could have been included just because exploring was kind of like a big thing for that set and was the the new thing uh it was it was really cool to play with so the fact that it's now getting like a way to put it on to other creatures rather than you know there's like an enchantment that gave your creatures explore 
uh, but this is kind of like a way that you can pick and choose without having to dedicate to a certain color and you know an archetype and things like that so really neat really cool also can get you to the city's blessing you know if you're playing with some of the older Ixalan sets and uh, potentially help you fuel the descend mechanic by revealing permanent cards and putting them into your graveyard so really cool really neat the card is fine by itself but then the important thing obviously is the new token that gets created when it enters the battlefield so with all that out of the way let's go ahead and uh, take a look at uh, our other a new card with uh, the returning mechanic so we can kind of look at and see kind of what explore looks like on another creature so here we have uh sin note scout which is a one green for a one one when air battlefield it explores so you reveal the top card of your library put that card into your hand if it's a land otherwise put a plus one plus one counter on this creature then put the card back or put it into your graveyard put it the card back just seems like such a weird wording for a card like that it has nothing to do necessarily with the mechanic but it's just a weird way of putting it uh this thing's a merfolk uh, we know that merfolk were pretty prominent on Ixalan, along with like pirates and dinosaurs and vampires. So we could see a lot of new merfolk support potentially for the modern players and maybe even seeing it come into Pioneer as well. But uh, the explore mechanic, you know, does just that. You essentially get to traverse a deeper into your deck for essentially uh, a random effect of like either getting to draw a card if it's a land, so you have a better chance of drawing a spell or getting to uh, manipulate the top of your deck by getting rid of a card that you don't necessarily want to draw, or getting to keep it on top, and then still getting the bonus anyway of getting a plus one plus one counter on your creature. This being a potential like one mana, a one mana one one that draws a card, or one mana two two that can help you get some kind of like card selection as well, is is very good. Uh, I I don't think it's necessarily like pushed, especially by like today's standards for one ones, but nonetheless can still be a very aggressive option that is going to either fill the role of helping you find lands, either by actually finding a land or getting to put cards in graveyards to get you to that point where maybe you're starting to draw some lands or giving you a better opportunity to draw lands or helping you find and draw a spell that you absolutely need. Uh, overall, you know, good to see Explore come back. Explore is a fun mechanic. It's really cool and I think is a lot of fun and creates a few key decision points in matches where you need to figure out like, okay, what does this spell do for me? Um, especially like in those scenarios and stuff. And kind of the relief when like you reveal like a land, even though your creature's not getting bigger, you know, it, it feels kind of nice knowing that like I, I now have a better chance of drawing a spell because I really didn't want to necessarily draw a land. You know, so you just kind of get to draw the land now and potentially draw a spell later. You know, so really cool, really neat. Uh, good to see it come back, especially in this set that seems to have a lot of like new mechanics and uh, bringing back a few others, reprinting a few other cards as well. So uh, let's go ahead, uh, jump over, take a look at our next and potentially last card. I hope past Dakota did this smart. All right, so this is present Dakota. That's uh, soon going to be past Dakota, but future Dakota kind of screwed up, and he had one more card before getting into some of the other cards that ended up having like a flip side. Uh, there's another one more mechanic after this one, and I guess this isn't really a mechanic. This is just something that is uh, new that people might may or may not know about the set. So it, Planeswalkers used to get printed in threes in every set. Uh, minus the War of the Sparks set that we had years ago that uh, essentially brought like just about every Planeswalker in the multiverse to the set in some uh, varying rarity uh, to do cool things, you know, to essentially like kind of cap off that part of the story. So uh, there are one Planeswalker. We got, uh, we had Ashiok in the last set and we have uh quintorius cond who is the uh, elephant from the Strixhaven set. Uh, that is part of the, I believe it's Lorehold, is like the, they're not even like a guild, it's like their their school or whatever in Strixhaven, so, or college, I guess. I don't know, Strixhaven was like, Strixhaven was cool, but it was weird to me. Uh, expressive iteration ruined everything. That sums it up. So, uh, Quintorius Khan is a 5 mana, 4 loyalty planeswalker that says whenever you cast a spell from exile, you it deals 2 damage to each opponent and you gain 2 life. With a plus one of creating a 3-2 red-white spirit creature token. So, protects itself with a plus one, you know, in a way. So, this is really neat. Discover four, which we had just went over with the first card that we looked at. 
that says you know you reveal to you hit a card with a converted mana cost four or less you get to cast a spell without paying its mana cost and then you get to uh put those cards at the bottom of your library in a random order so with this you can trigger his passive ability by getting to cast a spell you know and deciding like okay like i want to cast it you get to deal two damage to your opponent you gain two life and then of course you get the effect of casting the spell and whatever it does uh, pretty cool. Uh, nice that a new mechanic makes its way onto a Planeswalker. Kind of sucks that we don't have multiple Planeswalkers in the set now to kind of flesh out some of the other mechanics as well. Or, you know, to kind of build off of some of them. But, you know, I understand that uh, the look at Planeswalkers now is trying to make them feel more unique and, you know, less... You know, less like a dominating, like almost like every deck can have some amount of planeswalkers, and trying to make it a little bit more uh, fun and interesting with uh, just one per set. So, you know, we'll kind of see how how this card does. Uh, the last ability, before I forget, uh, you exile any number of target cards from your graveyard. You add a red mana for each card exiled this way, and you may play those cards this turn. Essentially, uh, if you're able to do this and you can keep Quintorius around, you can just end up dealing like a ton of damage to your opponent. And of course, finding other ways to just exile cards. You know, we see in the Boros Pia deck where you have like Ren's Resolve and things like that that exile cards and then you just get to play them from exile you know you can't trigger his passive from playing a land but you can trigger it from casting spells from exile so really neat of course works with the adventure mechanic as well because those cards are technically cast from exile and the spell doesn't need to resolve to deal with damage so uh definitely works pretty well with some of the cards from the previous set of wilds of eldraine while also fitting in with a new mechanic from this set so it could be an interesting player in standard for sure not exactly sure where it ends up on the pioneer probably definitely too slow for modern but you know you you never know with cards like this so they, they can find like a niche and end up doing something pretty crazy so uh definitely interesting to see you know what what this looks like in the future so uh, with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the last few cards, last new cards, and another new mechanic from this set. Alright, so I'll make this quick because ads hate me on Mythic Spoiler, which is where I like kind of looking at all these new spoils and things like that. So the Enigma Jewel is a one mana legendary artifact that enters the battlefield tapped. You can tap it, add two colorless mana, spend this to only activate abilities, and it has craft with four or more other non-lands with activated abilities for eight mana and a blue so you pay the cost you exile this artifact and you exile four or more from among other permits you control and or cards in your graveyard and you return this card transformed under its owner's control and you can only craft as a sorcery so the enigma jewel turns into locus of enlightenment so locus of enlightenment has the activated abilities of the exile cards used to craft it you may activate each of those abilities only once each turn and whenever you activate an ability that isn't a mana ability you copy it and you choose new targets for the copy so you exile a bunch of other non-land cards and this is essentially like an all-in-one piece obviously it makes it more vulnerable but that said you get all these activated abilities on one card you can craft it with cards from the graveyard so you're not even necessarily losing like permanents and stuff in play you know and potentially getting blown out that way you could like fill up your graveyard with a ton of stuff and then you know flip this with those cards in the graveyard so uh getting to double up on abilities you know very powerful strionic resonator is like another card that people really like playing there's like the enigma engine or something like that from the uh the last Zendikar set, Zendikar Rising, I believe is the set name, that uh, Lithoform Engine, the Lithoform Engine does, you know, copies abilities and things like that, and uh, rings a bright hearth. You know, those kinds of effects are very powerful, you know, in like commander formats and just in general are very powerful when you can double up on certain triggers, especially very powerful ones as well. Uh, to see what comes from this set and what we can see in standard, so on, will be pretty interesting. Uh, this card, as far as like playing in something like modern you know we could see like urza maybe make a return with something like this uh while maybe not necessarily the activated abilities 
uh, of adding mana with the Enigma Jewel is going to be that important. Definitely the fact that it's easy to cast for one blue. You can make a ton of mana just by making a ton of just random artifacts and then getting to fill your graveyard with some very powerful uh, activated abilities artifacts. I mean, we do have a bunch of enchantments, very powerful ones, or uh, artifacts, excuse me. Or even just other things that have great activated abilities from sets like 8th edition onward. Uh, overall, definitely a crazy card that could do a lot of potentially busted things. You know, uh, that is only capped by getting to activate those abilities once each turn, but getting to have, you know, four or more abilities stacked on top of this thing is, you know, pretty insane. Uh, even getting to, like, necessarily, like, exile other cards, other things that have activated abilities with it as well. Uh, and uh, exile another Enigma Jewel so then you could like tap your Locus of Enlightenment for mana as well to essentially do the same thing. So uh, really cool, really interesting. Uh, I would like to see craft be done on a few more cards, so that would actually be really cool. Uh, so that is going to do it for the spoilers and stuff for the Ixalan set. I really want to go over cards that showed off new mechanics, uh, some interesting things from like the set and whatnot. Spoilers, we're just going to continue to get more of them, you know, as we go on, as per usual. Now, if I find any other uh, interesting cards, ones that are worth looking at, uh, cards that seem to have, you know, some potential Pioneer Modern written all over them, I think there is, like, a few cards that we could see, but, of course, we will kind of take that with a grain of salt as we kind of approach the... Uh, Lost Caverns of Ixalan set release. So if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more spoiler videos like this, or you just want to see more modern Pioneer content of the sort, please consider subscribing to the channel, ring the notification bell, so you know when those videos get posted. It's easy to support my channel just by subscribing. You know, I really do appreciate it, and it keeps me making videos, uh, hopefully now at a more, uh, a little bit more consistent basis, now that kind of uh, some of the craziness has kind of died down. So that's going to do it for me. Hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you all in the next one.